Most likely he'll never reach out. He's got bigger fish to fry. But in the thousand to one chance that he does, thank God he's dead. How? Oh. Howard? Howard! Howard, you need to leave. Walter White fancied himself as an incredible liar, a true master of the craft in his own mind. Walt would always have a certain ebb and flow to his rhythm while providing intricate details into things that never happened. But Walt's aptitude for lying was not particularly good. Lies on top of lies. Walt got so used to telling outrageous lies, he thought he could lie his way out of anything. Walt also viewed Skyler as a complete and total moron. But Skyler was on to his lying ways, and she kept it to herself. Even long after Walt became aware of Skyler knowing, he'd still lie and lie and lie. And even Walt Jr. was on to his lies near the end. The relationship between Kim Wexler and Jimmy McGill is fundamentally different. They generally do not tend to lie to each other, and by and large, the type of lies they tell each other tend to be more the variety of lying by omission. Jimmy wasn't forthcoming about what happened when he was picking up the bail money, although Kim quickly found evidence that something was amiss. This wasn't an elaborate, overly detailed lie in the mold of Walter White. It was more of an omission. And this season, Kim refrained from filling Jimmy in on a couple of important facts. The first being that she was approached by Mike, and the other being the headline from that meeting, the fact that Lalo Salamanca is alive. The relationship of Kim and Jimmy perhaps more closely resembles the relationship Walt and Skyler had with regards to money laundering. On that front, Walt and Skyler were together aligned in criminal activity, but Walt's cooking operation was separate from that. With the specific approach for money laundering, Skyler got her way, much to Goodman's dismay, because she hated the idea of Walt buying a laser tag joint. Skyler didn't want a Danny. She insisted they buy that particular car wash. She got her way, and Walt and Skyler played their separate roles. Walt carting in the money, and Skyler doing her thing. That is typically how a lot of Kim and Jimmy scams go. Kim is willing to follow Jimmy's lead if and when she agrees with his approach. She isn't exactly bossy, but at the same time, she has a way of being suggestive with Jimmy and usually getting her way when she believes her approach is superior. They generally make a better team than Walt and Skyler, and they have a more open and honest relationship. The one time Jimmy left Kim completely in the dark was when he decided to follow through with their Mesa Verde con after she had told him to drop it. Jimmy totally blindsided Kim here. She naturally didn't care to be the unwitting sucker in his scheme. And Jimmy's defense was that in the end, she got everything she originally wanted. Just as Kim is threatening to break it off, she suggests marriage. Kim's lie of omission here, when Jimmy brings up relief knowing that Lalo is dead, it is actually more than mere omission. Knowing that Lalo is alive is something Jimmy probably deserved to know, because his life could potentially be in danger. Kim not telling him may have come from a good place. Why make him worry? Mike told her it would probably never happen, and she knew he had guys watching over them just in case. The same thing can be said of Jimmy lying to Kim about what happened in the desert. Why worry her? Even if she is in the game now, I'm the player here, so she should be safe. In both cases, the other person probably deserved to know the information, even just the broad strokes, because it affected them. In other words, these omission lies may not seem as bad as the lavish lies Walt used to tell Skyler, but they remain every bit as harmful for the stability of that relationship, especially lying about Lalo being alive. Assuming Kim and Jimmy survived the aftermath of Howard's cold-blooded murder unscathed, no doubt Jimmy will be a little miffed that Kim withheld that from him. Perhaps knowing this would have prevented Jimmy from doing the Howard scam. Jimmy was always a bit reluctant about attacking Howard this way. Maybe knowing Salamanca was on the prowl would have changed his outlook. 
Looking a bit deeper beneath the surface, you get the impression that Kim knows more about Jimmy's past than Jimmy knows about Kim's. Not that Jimmy needs to know every little detail about her life, but Kim's past exudes an aura of mystery, like she's trying to erase her past, and now Jimmy is doing the same since Chuck's death. But at the end of the day, in terms of lying, Jimmy McGill is not the new Walter White at this point in the story. Kimmy Corleone is the new Heisenberg. Skylar may have gotten her way on the car wash, but that was the exception to the rule. Because in that relationship, Walt was the one who normally got his way. Walt wanted to cook, and he was gonna be the best damn cook the world has ever known with the finest trademark blue on any market. All of those lies Walt told were about getting his way, and even when the lies weren't working, he didn't care. In fact, on some level, Walt wanted credit for his incredible criminal prowess. Walt wanted to do what he liked and was good at, and his lies were an initial means to an end. So when you look at the lies Walter told Skyler, it was about him doing what he liked and was good at that made him feel alive, really alive. It's the same thing with Kim. Running the con makes her feel alive, really alive, in the same way cooking did for Walt. That is why Kim gave up on her dreams and turned around. She wanted the rush that only the hustle could provide her. Just look at how overjoyed with pleasure she was listening to poor Howard's demise unfold. This is also why Kimmy really lied to Jimmy. She was afraid that telling him, even though it was the right thing to do, would distract him from the mission at hand. Ruining poor Howard was part of that plan, and her reckless behavior started a domino effect that left poor Howard dead. That was no doubt an unintended consequence, but it was real all the same. Exactly like the plane crash after Walt rolled Jane over before he watched her die. Howard getting killed by Lalo was every bit as unintended as the plane crash, but their desire to con and cook and feel alive, really alive, resulted in lives ending. Walter White would always prove innovative when desperate measures called for him to eliminate any and all potential obstacles. Right now, Kimmy and Jim have two potential threats. One being Howard's dead body, and the other being whatever assistance Lalo is now demanding. My guess here is that Kim will be the one who helps address these obstacles. And if she is successful, I believe she will be the one to handle both the fallout of Howard's demise, and also the situation with Lalo. In addition to having poor Howie's corpse to contend with, we also know that Howard informed Cliff and Cheryl about his issues with Jimmy. No doubt Howard disappearing will require multiple challenges for Kimmy and Jimmy, disposing of the body and dodging suspicion. The Lalo situation will also require some type of strategic plan that traps Lalo. A lot of people are assuming that Mike and or Gus will be the ones who ultimately deal with Lalo, and I suspect that might well still be the case. I definitely believe that Mike will need to assert himself over Tyrus as Gus's top henchman that we know he becomes in Breaking Bad. Right now, Tyrus and Mike seem to be jockeying for that top spot, which suggests Tyrus might fail to protect Gus's interests in an area where Mike swoops in for the rescue. Obviously, Mike and Tyrus are both alive during most of Breaking Bad, but there must be some way that Lalo neutralizes Tyrus before Mike steps in. The thing of it is, I strongly suspect that Kim will be instrumental in bringing down Lalo. Assuming, that is, that Kim survives the Lalo ordeal unscathed, which is not a given, but I believe she will. I still maintain that the evidence to date strongly suggests the compelling possibility that Kim not only survives into the beginning of the Breaking Bad timeline, but I believe she survives as a player in some capacity. If Kimmy Corleone really is the new Heisenberg, both with telling lies to pursue the things that make them feel really alive, and also with eliminating obstacles that get in the way of anything that threatens their ability to feel really alive, then Kim might well triumphantly march into the beginning of the Breaking Bad timeline like a complete and total badass. 
I could be way off the mark here, but I truly believe Kim does pave the way into the Breaking Bad timeline and that she is still very much in cahoots with Goodman. I think Kim will survive the Howard aftermath and help deal with the Lalo situation by coordinating with Mike. Remember how hot and turned on Kim was listening to Howard's demise? Imagine how overjoyed she will be if she is the one to get them out of the Lalo jam. Kimmy and McGill are still scheming and sexing their way through the Breaking Bad timeline, where Jimmy is just playing the character of Saul Goodman for his public image. Maybe Kim doesn't survive until the end of the Breaking Bad timeline, but I definitely tend to believe she makes it into the beginning of it. Then again, what the hell do I know? I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. Whatever happens, I am very fired up for the second half of the final season of Better Call Saul. Midway through, I believe things have been really tight. Tight, 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 tight. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. You need to understand. I have to hear one more time that you did this for the family. I did it for me. We're going to pull the plug, and we are going to live to fight another day. What other day? I liked it. I was good at it. It happens today. I was really I was alive. When he, in fact, is compromised. I beg your pardon? I think you heard me. Howard. So I pull out the hose to put it back and whoosh! Yeah, I am suddenly soaked in gasoline. I mean, on my arms and my legs and my, my groin. The nuns back in Cicero would send me to hell for saying it, but thank God he's dead. And I race home, I run inside the house and I'm stripping off my clothes as fast as I can. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. Uh, Who is it? Us. That, my friend is Albuquerque's public enemy number one. Take that thing and get the hell out of here. You and me, we're done. Nostradamus. Quasimodo's the hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, right. Notre Dame. Nostradamus. Nostradamus and Notre Dame. It's two different things completely. Hey. I say we're done. You're done. You are done!